Hi everyone, uh, this is Tom Tanner from Zedek. I'm sitting here with Annabelle de Vries. We're assuming everyone can hear us. Uh, someone give us a, somebody drop us a message to say you're hearing us loud and clear. That would be nice, thanks. We're gonna talk through the, the, this presentation here. Um, we have tried to address some of the questions that you people sent in beforehand. Uh, but do anything that comes to you, do drop it into the um, into the chat box and we'll try and either answer them as we go along or part for the Q&A at the end. And it may be that we've covered some of the things that you uh, wanted to ask anyway. Um, our video or to, to see us isn't working, but we've got some we've got little pictures in to show you who we are anyway. Um, just to let you know. I'm uh, the, program, the program director for, for the Climate Change and Development MSC, and uh, I'm a reader in Environment and Development at SOAS. Um, we are part of CEDEP, which is a Centre for Development, Environment and Policy, which is a research centre and teaching centre that sits within the School of Interdisciplinary Studies. So our bigger departmental framework is that School for Interdisciplinary Studies, in the same way there's a Department for Development Studies, a Department for um, Economics and so on. Um, so we're going to run through the presentation and we're going to cover the following format. We're going to introduce the backgrounds, um, introduce you to some of our research and academic interests, uh, and then talk through um, the programmes that we offer and consider some of the sort of key points of the importance of climate change and sustainable development. Um, and then run through the SEDEP programme to give you an idea of how, how it works. Um, and some of the benefits of studying with SEDA, and then we'll follow with your questions and answers, which hopefully we can answer today. And if not, we'll be able to email you and make sure that you've got all those questions answered. I thought we'd get to know a little bit about our backgrounds and, and also the entry points for, for climate change and sustainability. Um, so I'm one of the academics at SEDEP. I'm probably the, the one who has the broadest uh, set of experience on working on climate change and development issues, including uh, I specialize on adaptation and resilience, but I've worked the low carbon development uh, work as well. Uh, I authored the textbook for the, the main climate change and development module uh, here and I'm particularly interested in the politics of the policy process, so it fits with the some so as ideology quite well to think about this is not just about learning about the technical approaches to tackle climate change, but actually the politics of the policy process, you know, whose interests, uh, who gets to decide why and how you might navigate those those decision making frameworks. I'm particularly interested in the anticipatory decisions and how can we uh, encourage greater anticipatory decision making. So I've been working recently with the use of uh, early warning systems that are linked to action. So forecast based finance, as it's known, where finance is provided on the basis of um, a forecast rather than waiting until a disaster happens in order to take action. Um, I'm also working a lot in the cities and urban resilience has become quite a, a catch-all term for tackling climate shocks and other stresses like security, terrorism uh, and economic shocks and so I've been engaged in particular with the Rockefeller Foundation working on uh, urban resilience programming and finally um, I have an interest in the children and youth that goes back 15 years and um, it's you know it's all the more relevant now and we're kind of re reforming that coalition with uh, some of the big international uh, youth-centered NGOs to look at the climate change and, uh, and youth links, particularly around the, the rise of Greta and others uh, as uh, big activists in the climate change world. Annabelle. Thank you, Tom. Um, so my background, um, slightly unlike Tom, is very much focused in, has been very focused in the educational sector. Um, I've worked in Birkbeck, um, I've worked at SEDEF for about 12 years now as a tutor. Um, and I've also worked at UCL and City University. But all my work has really been um, centered around sustainable development and um, specifically issues of food and gender. Um, and particularly the Sustainable Development 2030 
agenda hinges very much on food, its production, its distribution, and the social, economic, and environmental systems that drive and shape the food system, um, both regionally, locally, and globally. Um, and my interests really lie in how those processes impact people and their health and the environment and the livelihoods uh, they can derive from the food system. Um, so that goes all the way through the value chain from production to distribution to processing and consumption. Um, so my recent work um, combines ideas of the food system and sustainable development. And I've been involved with um, an organization called IFSTA, which is the Interdisciplinary Food Systems Teaching and Learning um, Program. And that really works to cut across many of the um, many of the themes that we find in the sustainable development program. Um, for example, um, discussions of um, poverty and um, market access, transport, environmental challenges, degradation, resource management, and also ideas of uh, an intersect of inequality as well within um, different um, scenarios and my area particularly within the food system. Um, and connected to this is one of my interests in pedagogy and specifically interdisciplinary pedagogy which tries to um, consider the benefits of bringing together different disciplines in trying to tackle the complex problems that are uh, characteristic of the food system and that is the complex environmental um, feedback loops that um, we find across the globe and also um, complexity in terms of inequality within the food system. So um, food systems that are reliant on migrant workers, for example, or are reliant on degrading the, 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 the environment. Um, but at the same time, um, with local livelihoods dependent on those environments. So um, one of the um, issues recently has been an increasing need to work across disciplines um, to find uh, so, sort of complex um, solutions to these important issues. Um, so that kind of, they kind of go together quite nicely. And I think cut across a lot of the themes that we offer on our modules, um, both within the Sustainable Development Programme and the climate change. Um, my other interests are um, to do with gendered construction of the environment, which goes back to my PhD work, which looked at um, milper farmers in Mexico, um, and also um, political economy and cultures of food around the organization of cooperatives where I did some work for the FAO. So one of the questions you're asking yourselves probably is why you should be studying uh, these masters uh, from a from the perspective of the topic itself. And you will all recognize that there's much greater awareness in the last five years and even in the last year of climate change and sustainability as key issues. And we've seen much levels of activism, greater levels of activism globally. Uh, we've seen since the Paris Agreement of 2015, we've seen much greater levels of international um, interest in climate change. And that is varied internationally. So, you know, I think there's more in the way, in the global north, in the west, there's, there's greater interest in, in climate change and greater pressure from the public where there may be less so in the global south, but there's a growing realization that in the global south is that, that the environmental constraints uh, that climate change and other environmental stresses are putting on the development process through the pernicious slow onset events uh, like salinization of soils, for example, and the kind of more rapid onset disaster, disaster events that we're familiar with too. Um, but, I think one of the reasons for studying this is, is to take the optimistic view and say, well, this is a way to train and work in a sector which is actually about the opportunities for taking action. And that's about pursuing the sustainable development goals and growth agendas, equity, poverty reduction can all be acted on whilst taking into account uh, climate change, uh, low carbon climate change and um, adapting to those impacts. So, 
we while we don't uh, focus the program on sustainable development goals in the way that some, some others might they are the backdrop for a lot of what we are doing um, and there is a job market that's increasingly focused on climate and sustainability issues uh, both in the kind of aid world or uh, development cooperation but also we're seeing much greater private sector and government um, agendas that are centering on climate change and sustainability. So why study at SEDEP and SOAS? Um, well, um, we've got over two decades of experience of distance learning. Um, the distance learning program began in uh, Y um, over 20 years ago and were first rolled out as correspondence courses where you had the traditional um, big pack of papers and learning materials sent to you um, and you sent your uh, written essays back to professors and uh, doctors where they would mark them and send them back to you. Um, so it, um, it, even then it was a, a very um, new way of learning and why which is where SEDEP began, part of the University of London, um, where the, were one of the first to do that, along with open universities. Um, so we've carried on that tradition and evolved over time to now um, being completely online and having all reading materials um, available online and all the readings and uh, library access is available to our 500 plus active students. Um, so we've got a wide network um, of students that come from a variety of backgrounds. Um, you'll be quite comfortable to find engineers and soil scientists alongside uh, people who work in politics and the UN, uh, local NGOs, teachers, private uh, businesses, all the way through um, in, in your interactions with your fellow students. And I think that gives such a, um, a, a wide, rich um, resource, actually, of, of knowledge and information between students as well. We've also got um, a wide network of specialist dissertation supervisors, which means that when you come to your dissertation, we handpick our supervisors and um, according to the subjects, the topic forms that you hand in and your interests um, so that they can guide you through your, your, your dissertation. Um, and you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with that supervisor all the way through to the uh, completion of your draft and, and final submission. Um, and we've also got quite um, a good history of our expertise linking the environment and development, as I say, over 20 years, based in um, Y College, which was part of the University of London. It was an agricultural college um, and has specialised in environment and development for those that amount of time. Um, and we continue to add our staff, which have a, a broad um, specialist, broad range of specialisms those themes. Um, so, us is also committed to diversifying and decolonising the curriculum. And so, being part of this, all our modules um, go through a process of making sure that what we are teaching is diverse and uh, uses uh, voices from all, all over the world and pays particular attention to power hierarchies within those particular discourses of that subject. Um, so that we, we're really very um, keen on ensuring inclusiveness and diversity right through all our learning materials and readings that you are given. Um, and of course, we're part of the University of London International Programmes, which is a widely recognised um, programme um, of higher education. And um, so the distance learning approach provides um, a, a way of uh, utilising your own professional knowledge and gaining more uh, academic knowledge and skills for your own career advancement. You can work around your employment and family commitments. Um, most of our students are working full time um, and can continue with their studies, um, many of which complete within um, two or three years. Um, 
So this is really good for, for families and uh, parents. Um, and of course, you get an internationally recognized set of qualifications. Um, whilst studying in your own country, you don't need to travel and uh, live and work in the UK. Um, and so therefore, we have a, a diverse global um, student community. And this allows you to save your money, spread the costs across the modules that you take. Um, you pay for each module as you go. So um, there's no massive outlay at the beginning. Um, so in terms of value for money, and um, also um, professional networking that you can um, take part in on our discussion forums and your student groups um, has proven to be very invaluable to many students that study with us. That's partly because uh, it's hard to say exactly how many, but certainly more than half of the students' programmes tend to have significant professional experience already and they're looking for the academic side. Others are looking to transition uh, into, into the field um, and others have done an undergraduate uh, course that's related, but they want some kind of further training um, to be able to take that career further. Now, our learning approach in terms of how our pedagogy of how we deliver the uh, distance learning is that there is a set of core teaching materials. So each module is divided into uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 units. And each unit will have a set of uh, core materials that are basically written text on PDFs and some uh, online exercises to help you um, test your own knowledge. Uh, along with kind of core readings and additional reading lists. There's then an online discussion forum where a lot of the kind of thought and debate and discussion, uh, which is moderated by, by tutors who guide you through that work every week and um, and set you questions to, for discussion. So the amount of participation is up to you on those forums. That's where a lot of people get a lot of the added value from these from these courses because it's about you know, learning from each other as much as it's learning from, from books and, uh, and articles. Um, there's a mix of uh, formative and summative assessments. So some of the, some of the assessment, some of the assessment work is to, to help you develop the skills and knowledge as you go through in order to prepare yourself for um, the final essays and uh, exams. The exam, which happens at the end of each module, we are phasing out exams, which is good news for many people who don't like them, but bad news for some uh, people who prefer to learn um, through exams. But there'll be more of the coursework based approach starting in October next year. But as it is, most of the assessment is done through an exam, so normally 50%. Um, then an essay or policy brief during the module, an early critical reflection and feedback where you take a piece of writing and summarize it critically and then that is then reviewed by your peers by other students uh, in your module and that's a way of helping you access the library helping you understand uh, how to summarize critically um, how to reference and there's also a proportion of the mark that's for your participation in the online forum so we expect kind of a minimum level of participation also the way we uh, run our um, programs are that, that you have a, a choice of three, um, uh, three qualifications uh, in each of those programs with climate change uh, and development and sustainable development programs. So the MSc um, requires you to take one course module, um, three elective modules, and finally um, a dissertation. And this takes um, around two to five years, and some people complete less. Um, to gain a postgraduate diploma, you will take the core module uh, plus three electives. So, of course, you get your dissertation as part of this. And for a postgraduate certificate, it requires one core module and one elective module. Um, so, that one takes between one and five years. Um, we do. We are interested in people who would who would like to continue studying with us um, and have interest in taking PhDs. Um, and we look at that on a on an independent basis for, for students um, and can depend on whether we can find supervisors that are, um, are relevant for the topic that you want to take. Um, 
but it's important to recognise that the MSc does not qualify, does not count towards the PhD qualification, which will be an extra minimum three years on top of your MSc. But um, in many cases, the MSc is, is, an, is a requirement to begin your PhD. You're having trouble hearing, um, Lacey. Make sure to talk. <laughs> Can we um, can we just see if anybody can hear us first by typing anything? <laughs> Several people. Okay. Okay. We'll uh, we'll try coming closer to the to the mic. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, so the other thing to, to to note on this is that the the minimum time you you can complete a um, C in is two years. And the other thing that, that we haven't made clear on there is that you can start with a certificate. I mean, you can register to a postgraduate certificate or a diploma, um, certainly a certificate, and then you can complete the, the modules. And if you're happy with them, and if you've got, you, you've passed them, then you can scale up and, and, and add those to, a, to an MSc by taking further modules and a dissertation. The one issue, of course, is that the dissertation process occurs in four, in a cycle of two years. So um, to complete that, you do need to do a minimum of two years in completing dissertation windows. So we'll talk about that now and how it actually runs. But it certainly is a very good idea for many of our students that haven't been in education for a long time um, and are concerned that, uh, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit closer because it's slightly near. <laughs> Oh, um, so yes, yeah, so just having, um, you know, people who are a little bit concerned that they haven't been in academia for a while, it's, it's always a, um, a, a nice way to bring yourself into it um, and see how you do. So a little on the structure of the, uh, the module, I think you might, have, you might have seen this on the uh, structure tab under each of the programme pages, uh, which are linked to the, to the earlier um, titles, the earlier slide. But essentially each year there are two module subject module sessions and dissertation study happens in between those so each of those uh, sessions takes 16 weeks in total and then in between there's a six to eight week dissertation period where which is where you'll work on initially your, your idea for your dissertation your proposed idea then you'll you'll work up an assess proposal which is a proposal for what you, the research you want to do and that and, and, a back, and a literature review and that's assessed and becomes part of the mark for the dissertation the final mark then in the third session third win window you'd be expected to essentially do the, the research itself for the dissertation and in the final window write it up so it can happen within two years but you've got you know five years uh, that you're allowed to enroll for so many students um, try and get through the modules but some take longer with the dissertations and that's and fell into practice because people need a break <laughs> every now and again. So this just really um, outlines the, the choices of modules that you have um, and shows you which ones are core and which ones are elective. Both um, programmes have one core. Um, you'll notice with climate change and development, um, those are separate, the, the electives are separated into two lists. So you must um, choose between one and three in the first list, in list A, and um, up to two lists, can be, uh, up to two modules can be chosen in list B. With the sustainable development, um, any of those electives can be chosen as part of that programme. Um, yes, so we run those elective modules to a, to a calendar, so um, the core modules are run every six months, so you can start the programme either in October or in April. And the electives run essentially every other, so they're staggered. So one will run in the April session and another will in the October session. So there's plenty to choose from. And we're also expanding that offer uh, with the ability to take modules from other departments and so as. So we're, that's something we're currently working on. Currently we can, we're, working with the, we're offering the Center for International Security and Diplomacy departments uh, online modules around global public policy and critical human security but we're also looking at the development studies department here is spinning up online master's courses too so module sharing is on our 
on our horizon. So that's enough from us. Uh, has anyone got any questions that we haven't covered that they'd like to type in and we can respond to? Awesome to. I'm not sure if we've got. Uh, If you unmute your mics, then we can possibly hear you. No questions. No, people are typing, so that's fine. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. How many? What percentage of people uh, achieve the MSc in two years? It's hard to say because they haven't been running uh, for that many years. So we're in the third year of the Climate Change and Development MSc, and then we're in the second year of the Sustainable Development MSc. Um, in the first year of the uh, 17 who joined in the first year, I think five graduated in two years. So we just had them, we just had them uh, graduate, had the exam board where they officially graduate. Um, but so it's hard to say. How many, how many do do it in two years because we haven't got the uh, track record. Can you pause the program? Well, you have five years from when you register and you're allowed to pause within those five years. That's, that gives you the flexibility to take modules or and you're, you can defer the dissertation pro process to say, oh, I want to, I'll do the, the fourth stage in the, in, in, a, in the next window or the next window. Um, so yes, you can take you can take whatever modules you want, but you need to complete within five years that you register. Environmental justice, conversion of low-income neighbourhoods to solar renewable. Well, the, the the energy and development and the low carbon development courses will be appropriate for that. Andrew Smith, you're interested in uh, kind of low-income neighbourhoods to to solar and renewables. Um, you can take those options on on either, but if you want to set them within the context of of climate broader climate change policy then I would take the climate change um, MSc. And if you're thinking that as part of a more broad sustainability uh, framing, then the sustainable, sustainable development one would be more appropriate. Um, uh, you can do the modules first and then the dissertation. Yes, as long as it's within the five year limit. But the dissertation, uh, you, yes, you can, you could take two years to do it, two years to do the modules and two years to do the uh, dissertation. And indeed, you can you can sign up to just do the, the PG um, dip in that in that process. And then you would you could, you could see if, if you don't want to do the dissertation at the end, then you could just leave with the postgraduate diploma, uh, which is essentially the, the same requirements, but not including the dissertation. Um. Anton's asking, do SEDEP students have access to wider service resources? As distance learners, um, in terms of physical space, um, no, the answer is, um, because all the resources are available online. Um, although um, online we do have SOAS bulletins and we do have a programme area where we're increasingly sharing things of interest that are happening local, you know, in, in SOAS um, and also according to our, our own interests related to the, to the courses. But in terms of workspace and events, unless it's public, then um, there's, there's no specific access to distance learners. Maybe you've asked uh, for clarity that if you, yes, the answer is yes, if you start on the PG certificate level, uh, as long as you complete those to a, to a decent uh, degree and pass them, then yes, you can upgrade to the MSc level by doing the extra electives and participation. Oh, well, if you, you asked if you can postpone the start entry to the program after you've been accepted. Um, yes, I think for one year, it may be one year and a half, you'd have to confirm with registry. I know that in, if it's two years, if you postpone for two years, you have to reapply. But that's not normally a problem. In fact, if you reapply, if you defer and then your, your offer runs out, as it were, you just reapply and it will come up, it will come up that you've previously had an offer. So that will be sent to um, the decision makers, who are actually Annabelle and I, uh, for, for acceptance on the course. And we'll see that you've previously had an, an offer already. So yes, it, it lasts uh, a while. 
Is it okay to build on or use someone's dissertation topic but a more focused choice of your country? Well, part of the dissertation is really about producing something that's um, original. So you would pick the original set part by it being focused on a particular country. But I think using someone else's topic, I think we would have to determine how how close it was to that um, to that dissertation. We expect students to come up with something that's um, their own work, and uh, but certainly in any any research or dissertation, there are elements at the end of those dissertations which gives ideas for further research. So you can certainly build on somebody's work. There's nothing to say you can't do that. Um, so I hope that answers your question. But it's important, yeah. obviously it's important that it's not plagiarised, so it needs to be entirely your own writing and um, that's that we have software to look, look at the plagiarism levels as well, which you can be familiar with. So yeah, it's important that it is uh, an original piece of work. Lacey, who I think has just left, <laughs> will the electives uh, like Human and Critical Security and Global Citizenship and Advocacy be available on the MSC Sustainable Development? Yes, um, from the regulations uh, starting um, in 2020, so from October, we are now free to offer anything from our sister departments, um, but we're making a, an informed decision in the next few months about which of those things we want to offer that are coherent with our program. Um, there's a question about what, can you take exams in one fixed location? No, you can take each module, you can take the exams at an exam center in a different country, so if you move around, it's fine. You just have to work out where you are. Um, you basically sign up, get in touch, you register to, uh, to take the exam for that module where, wherever you like. Through the University of London. Through the University of London, yes. So the University of London is the exams, and they send you a link um, for you to register. Oh, yeah. Deadlines on, yeah, deadlines on assignments, they're set. So the deadlines for assignments are set at midnight uh, UK time. For a particular date, so that's uh, that's how you deal with it. It's midnight, it's whatever the time is in your, your time zone is. Then the best way around that is to submit early. Uh, the exams occur at the same time in the respective countries, so 10 o'clock wherever you are, or or, or 2 p.m. wherever you are. Yes, yeah, so when an exam, the question about when an exam isn't uh, timing isn't suitable. There's not much we can do about it. Uh, other than take that exam in the, ne in the next cycle. So we put the exam timetable out early so you can see when it is. Um, there's someone unfortunately on one of my programs getting married uh, on the, uh, the day after her exam and she's just deferring and taking it uh, when, when it next runs in the next cycle. Um, that is one of the problems with exams and that's one of the reasons we are moving away from them. Oh yes, that was a good question. Michael, can you take a module from list B before taking one from list A? Now, that's, it's unusual, but it's, uh, yes, the answer is yes, you can. You can take something from the list B on the climate change course before taking a, a list A option, but just don't think you have to take at least one from option A, because we're looking to stream that as being a specific climate change masters. Any disruptions or risks because of Brexit? Not that we know of. Um, that shouldn't really affect us. We're not. One of the main disruptions that was uh, likely, that's seen as likely from the universities is around visas and we don't, the, the distance learning program, we don't uh, rely on visas. Hi, do we offer admission for MPhils? It's a good question. Uh, normally, we don't have an MPhil program in, in setup. That's normally an offer, uh, an award that's given for people who do a PhD program but don't finish it. So we don't have a specific MPhil track. Thanks all. Any final questions, do type them in. Otherwise, thanks a lot for joining. Really appreciate it.